The origins of the word suck can be traced back centuries, meaning to sip, taste, and drink. However, the slang version of the word, meaning something is really bad, didn't become popular until the early 1900s when the phrase suck eggs was born. Now, as it pertains to pro wrestling entrance theme music, well, let's just say that there have been plenty of suckers through the years. That being said, I'm Kevin Callis from Wrestling Behind the Themes, and won't you please subscribe? Because here are 10 more entrance theme songs that totally suck. Biscuits and gravy. When you hear the words biscuits and gravy, most normal folk conjure up images of flaky, buttery biscuits topped with a decadent, sausage-studded, creamy gravy. But not this guy. I picture the hillbilly pairing of Jesse and Festus. The dim-witted duo were featured exclusively on SmackDown starting in 2007. And though they may not have set the WWE on fire, their theme song, Biscuits and Gravy, will go down in history as one of Jim John's Constant's most ridiculous compositions. In an odd to their character's country fried roots, this song just plain southern sucked. The lyrics made no sense, and Jesse and Festus never ever referred to biscuits and gravy outside of this song title. So why was this the first image and phrase we got? Sorry folks, but this tune won't be inducted into the Hillbilly Hall of Fame anytime soon. The year was 1992, and World Championship Wrestling was desperately seeking mainstream acceptance. Thanks to a crop of young talent like Sting, the Total Package Lex Luger, and the Steiner Brothers, things were slowly beginning to happen down in Hot Lana. WCW was also becoming more merchandise savvy with action figures, its own magazine, and of course, a cheesy CD featuring wrestlers' entrance themes. WCW's weak attempt to answer the WWF F's Pile Driver album, we can all agree that this tune is a wipeout of epic proportions with plenty of questionable lyrical choices at best. I mean, he's your biggest star, and all you can say about him is he does this and he does that? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills here. What's wrong with you, WCW? Stronger words could have been written by a kindergartner, and for that reason, this Surfer Sting song totally sucks, dude. There are some that might argue that the golden era of wrestling entrance music occurred from 1989 to 1992, when the WWF was banging out hit after hit for the likes of the Honky Tonk Man, the Big Boss Man, and yes, even Brutus the Frickin' Barber Beefcake. However, just prior to all of this in 1988, while creating some pretty dope tunes to fit the personalities of Sneaky Snakes and Ultimate Warriors, legendary composer Jim Johnston was told to make a theme for a debuting wrestler called the Red Rooster. Oh, man. Jim must have thought he'd just flown over the cuckoo's nest, because not even a musical savant like him could have made that cock crow, and fans refused to rock out when Terry Taylor began strutting down the aisle while getting his cock on to this painfully bizarre, upbeat dance track that was truly for the birds. Well, well. The Big Show's theme proves that you don't need the sound of an annoying animal to make a wrestle-crap-tastic theme song. You just need a song that starts off with what sounds like what I imagine a large man giving birth to a baby sounds like. I mean, who actually sings like this? Oh, that's right, nobody. It's like they recorded Eddie Vedder on the toilet or something. I'm sorry, having to listen to all these sucky themes is making me kind of cranky. So let me apologize to Joe Altier, lead vocalist for the band Brand New Sin, and the guy who's been bellowing Paul White's theme song for over 20 years, back when he was in the WWE, and now that the world's largest athlete is a part of AEW. You know what, though? That isn't the only terrible theme White had, lest we forget about his days as the giant in WCW. <laughs>
If you consider the Blackpool Combat Club to be a top-tier wrestling group, then on the flip side, the Dungeon of Doom may be the most absurd group in the history of sports entertainment. Born from Kevin Sullivan's kayfabe desire to rid the world of Hulkamania in the mid-1990s, WCW was still smack dab in the middle of creating cartoonish characters, so it should come as no surprise that the Dungeon's monstrous cast were some of the worst of the worst, like the Shark and the Zodiac. But nothing compares to the master, aka King Curtis Iakea, who would just hoot and holler on longer than a coked up Ultimate Warrior promo. His maniacal laughter throughout this track sounds like something you'd hear on a sucky Halloween music CD you buy at a gas station. Good enough for a middle school haunted house? Sure. How about for a wrestling entrance theme? No way, Jose. <laughs> Known for his salsa-like dance moves and crazy conga lines, No Way Jose was a muy bueno bubbly babyface when he was hyping up NXT house shows in Florida, but much like similar gimmicks that preceded him, like Fandango and Adam Rose, once you are pegged as a fun-loving dancing guy, it's really tough to shake that label. I mean, I kind of feel bad for the guy for not working out on the main WWE roster, but let's face it, the dude wasn't exactly going to be the next Juan Cena. And I also never realized just how sad No Way Jose looks on his theme song album cover. It's like he already knows how it's going to end. Or maybe he's just sick and tired of having to pretend to enjoy his entrance music, which is just basically several minutes of obnoxious honking. Now will someone please cue the sound of silence? Hello darkness, my old friend. <laughs> Full disclosure here, I'm a massive fan of the smooth sounds of Yacht Rock. You know, the genre of music that perfectly pairs with catching a summer breeze while sailing away drinking pina coladas and blessing the rains down in Africa. Woo! These are the songs of the 70s and 80s performed by renowned artists like Hall & Oates, Christopher Cross, and Michael McDonald. But here's the lowdown, folks. Pretty Peter Avalon's theme song, Chilled Champagne, makes this list because it doesn't quite fit the tip Typical pro wrestling theme song motif. And I get it, it's all part of his gimmick, because only a fool would believe otherwise. I guess it's slightly better than Peter shushing everyone. Nah. Put this song on ice, and screw you, Kenny Loggins. <laughs> When it comes to pro wrestling's past portrayal of the Asian culture, there's really no other word than oof that comes to mind. For as long as I can remember, there's been a history of taking talented wrestlers from the land of the rising sun and turning them into steaming piles of stereotypical shite. Shofunaki spent an amazing 12 years in the WWE being made fun of with every Asian gimmick in existence until they made his first name Kung and turned him into Kung Fu Naki. Never mind the fact that the term Kung Fu is actually Chinese. When Sho was repackaged in 2008, his entrance theme sounded like a horrendous ripoff of Carl Douglas's 1970s hit Kung Fu Fighting. And while Funaki tried to have fun with it, even as a comedy act, this tune will make you want to choppy choppy both ears off indeed. Looking for something even more controversial than Kung Fu Naki? Well, look no further than the almost cryogenically frozen Nazi Heidenreich. Yes, a pitch so shocking that even Vince McMahon was offended. Who on earth booked this crap? And what is this hot mess of a theme song that is hardly a song at all? Whatever you want to call it, Paul Heyman's voice can be heard repeating the name of vicious psychopath Heidenreich over and over and over again. The idea behind this was that it was meant to sound really intimidating and make children wet their pants in fear. Too bad, however, that not even the genius of Heyman could save this theme from sucking big time.
You know, it really says something about the creative talent of AEW's musical maestro Mikey Ruckus, who absolutely nailed Claudio Castagnoli's debut AEW theme song because as Cesaro, the Swiss Superman basically had more unmemorable entrance tunes than anyone except for maybe Wade Barrett. And that's not a compliment by any means. The King of Swing even himself thought this theme sucked, as he said quite honestly in a 2016 interview with with ESPN. I do not like my current entrance music. He said of this heavy metal style swing and a miss by CFOs.